Five tips, five minutes. I'm gonna make you a better sports photographer right now. Hey guys, welcome back. So listen, sports photography is hard and mainly that's because there's just so much competition out there. There are a lot of good sports photographers, but not nearly as many great sports photographers. So I'm gonna try and keep this under five minutes, but if you want to be elite when it comes to being a sports photographer, make sure you're paying attention to these five things. Clean backgrounds. This is what separates the great photographers in sports from the average ones. And whenever you're out there shooting game action or sports action, you always wanna look for what we call clean backgrounds. So that means framing and lining up your shots to avoid as many distractions as you possibly can in the background. So these are things like ugly advertisements on the walls behind the game, ball boys and girls, line judges, busy buildings, or clusters of other people behind what's going on in your shot. The images that have the most impact are the ones that let the athlete be the focal point. And the background should work in your favor in that regard, not against. So whenever you're out there shooting and you're getting ready to size up your shot, the very first thing you should look for is not the subject, is not the foreground, but actually the background. So always look at your background first. Obviously settings are a huge part of any type of photography and in sports you want to make sure your exposure settings are working in your favor. As a rule of thumb, no matter what scenario you find yourself in, you want to have your shutter speed as high as you possibly can, your ISO as low as you possibly can, and your aperture as wide open as possible, while still maintaining the combination of all these three elements to get the right exposure. Speaking generally, my rule, minimum shutter speed, one one thousandth of a second. That will help freeze your action 90% of the time. Aperture generally set to 2.8 to blur out that background and give you that nice creamy bokeh behind your subject and whatever the lowest possible ISO I can get away with is what I'm going to use to avoid digital noise or any grain in my photos. With those general guiding principles in mind, you will be in great shape. Now, the way you crop is just as important as the way you shoot. And in general, you wanna make sure that the athletes you're shooting look larger than life. That's what makes sports photography so great. And cropping is actually a very important, critical part in making that happen. So here are two quick rules for that. Number one, do not, I repeat, do not cut off limbs. So don't cut off the athlete's feet, their hands, their fingertips on the edge of the frame. It just looks awkward and does your subject no favors in making them look heroic or larger than life. I know things are happening fast out there, so if your limbs get naturally cut off in camera while you're shooting, then just crop further in and just commit to that upper body crop. It's much better than having your fingers, your toes, your extremities cut off. And number two, either crop full body or commit to the upper torso, upper half crop. But don't get caught in between in no man's land at somewhere like a three-fourths or three-quarters crop. Over time, the more pictures you shoot, the more pictures you crop, you will definitely get a feel for what seems natural, what feels right, picture to picture, frame to frame. This one is just so simple and so easy to fix, but I see this mistake happen all the time in the sports portfolios that get sent my way. You wanna make sure that your backgrounds, your horizon lines are straight. Now this may seem obvious, but think about it. If you're shooting somebody running down the field, it's hard to get that perfectly straight in camera. Obviously things are happening fast out there and you can't really always perfectly compose the shot when it's happening in real time. But it's just such a simple adjustment when you're doing your cropping and when you're doing your editing after your shoot. And it just orients your viewer and makes for a much more balanced, aesthetically pleasing image. Unless you're shooting something like racing or a sport that's meant to be kind of more downhill like skiing, just think about the game itself. The players aren't running up a hill or down a hill. The field is flat, so just make sure that you're cropping your horizon line so that they're nice and straight and even, and that will help you out in giving your sports photos more impact. I see so many portfolios that get sent my way that just show the peak action, the throwing, the catching, the running, but there's so much more to sports than just what you see on the field of play or what's happening between the lines. The fans, the atmosphere, the stadium, the environment, 
the emotion, the highs, the lows. That's what we love about sports. So when you're out there shooting, make sure you treat every game or sporting event that you shoot like a story. Your job is to tell us a story, show us your take, a complete take, in a way that you and only you can see it. A great combination of game action, features, and emotional moments will really help elevate your sports portfolio to the next level. So there you go, those are five things that you can do right now to become a better sports photographer. And listen, I know some of these things may seem simple or obvious, but trust me, if you do these five things, you will already be better than 75% of the sports photographers out there. And then the other 25% is just perfecting your craft, practicing and finessing the sports photography that you do. So get out there, make it happen for yourselves. I can't wait to see what you guys come up with. If you found this video helpful, please do subscribe to the channel, drop a comment down below, give this video a thumbs up. I really appreciate the support as always, and I will check you guys at the next one. Go make it happen.